a nickname growing up. In fact, maybe you still do. And a lot of times in our culture, we will use adjectives or descriptors in a nickname uh, to describe someone. And sometimes they stick and sometimes they stay uh, as part of a person's um, title for the rest of their life. Well, this is interesting because this past Sunday, uh, we were working through our continuation in our Psalms of Summer series, and we looked at this idea of trust. Now, I, I'm not going to re-preach the sermon that Pastor Philip and I taught this past week again. In fact, I would encourage you to go back and check it out and walk through those exercises that we encouraged you to process through, uh, kind of laying aside some of the voices that we hear that distract us and really relying or leaning into the character of God while we're waiting and trusting him to speak and move in our life. Well, there's a connection between trusting God and who he is to his name. Um, we talked about this a little bit in the sermon. I want to unpack it a little more fully now, uh, but not completely. So the name of God in Hebrew is oftentimes, um, as best we could pronounce it, Yahweh. It was made up of four uh, consonants or letters in the Hebrew um, alphabet, and it was more easy to write, but it was difficult to pronounce, and as best that we could say it would be Yahweh. Well, even more interesting, uh, there were there was so much fear around violating the second commandment, is that even when they would come to the name of God or to write Yahweh, they would uh, skip a letter and out of fear of violating or taking the name of the Lord in vain. And in fact, you will, you may even from time to time see somebody today that rather than writing the letters G-O-D, they may write G-D. Listen, it's not, uh, it's not a violation of, 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 of God to write his name out, but that is an example of somebody that's even today trying to be, uh, extremely respectful and reverent to the name of God. I'm not recommending you do that. I'm just giving you a little backstory. What's more important, though, I want to go back to the idea of the nicknames. Uh, there were a lot of names that were used to describe God throughout Scripture. Um, El or Elohim is probably the most commonly used name of God. Uh, we see it all the way back in, in, in Genesis chapter 1. But more interestingly to me is uh, when we walk through the stories of the, the Old Testament and we see these encounters where God has, has interacted with his people, we see that there is a, an act of worship or acknowledgement of God's authority and then a, a descriptor, I'm going to be careful, loosely a nickname uh, attached to him. Let me give you a couple of examples. Um, Genesis chapter 22, this is uh, Abraham and, and having this encounter with God and God um, providing for him this ram in the thicket um, when he was called up on the mountain to sacrifice his son Isaac. And in that encounter, he, he uses this statement that said, the Lord provides. And the nickname ascribed from that in the Hebrew is Jehovah Jireh. And in fact, you may even have been familiar with some, um, some worship songs, for example. I think uh, Maverick City Music has a song right now that's, that uses that Jireh, uh, that, that name of God or adjective of God that really helps us press into him as our provider. And I think that's an important, that's beautiful, in fact, it's an encouragement for me and for you to remember, yes, he is our provider. He is our sustainer. Another example that we could see, uh, this is uh, Judges chapter 6, the story of Gideon. And in that encounter of Gideon in, in, in Judges chapter 6, Gideon uses another adjective or descriptor that becomes another name. Again, play on words, a nickname for God. And he says, the Lord is our peace. And this would be the name for Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, which is the Hebrew word for peace. 
Uh, we could go on and on. In fact, I would say if you just were interested to study this more and you looked at a, a, just a quick uh, web search for names of God, you will see several of them, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, um, and you know Adonai, Abba. There's so many different names and the importance of them is this. Each one of those names help us better unpack his nature. And one reason that is important is the more I better understand the nature and the character of God, the better I grasp his love, grace, and mercy. And in fact, uh, down the road, I better even understand myself because I'm made in his image. But more importantly, in the emphasis of worship and acceptable worship in the context of what we're talking through in the Psalms of Summer, I encourage you to spend some time searching and studying. You may want to go back to Genesis 22 with Abraham or Judges chapter 6 with Gideon. Do a little more searching on your own and these other descriptors or adjectives of the name of God. Not only be uh, aware of their origin, but also take some time to reflect and meditate. How has God shown you provision, Jehovah Jireh? How has God shown you peace, Jehovah Shalom, and on and on and on. And you can internalize and, and see and observe him displaying that character, that nature, that power and authority in your life today, because he is the same God today as he was yesterday, as he will be forever. And because of who he is, we worship him in spirit and in truth. I hope this has been encouraging for you today. I hope it's been motivating for you to study and search the scripture even more to see what you can unpack and discover as you mine deep for truth in the nature of God connected to his names or adjectives that describe his names. Listen, we love you. We care for you. We'd love to hear from you. Check out our website. Get some more information about who we are as a church. Also connect with us if there's some way that we can serve you. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you.